So in a nutshell, Fox is accused of platforming people like Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani who are making these claims about Dominion and also accused of endorsing said claims in certain instances with certain hosts. Is that is that a fair summary? That's t- completely accurate. And you zeroed in on what's so crucial and what's potentially so damaging for Fox once this goes to trial, which which we assume it will because Fox has not made any efforts, uh, serious efforts so far to settle this. And that's not that people like, <clears throat> it's not that, you know, Maria Bartiroma, uh, Lou Dobbs, Sean Hannity hosted Sidney Powell on their show and let her say these uh, outrageous things. Um, It's that they endorsed it. And that was what was so searing about the testimony from Rupert Murdoch that we saw come out this week is Rupert acknowledges, yes, my hosts endorsed these lies. And it's it's one thing like, you know, I write for The New York Times. I can write a story that says, you know, Donald Trump and his supporters are claiming that Dominion voting systems uh, are are hackable, that they were made by uh, Hugo Chavez in in an attempt to rig elections in Venezuela, and they brought them here, and now they're trying to rig the election against Donald Trump. Um, But I also would point out in my story, there's no proof for these allegations. In a lot of cases, and the reason why Dominion is suing, that but was never uttered by Fox by by some Fox hosts. They gave credibility to Sidney Powell. And to make the case even more damning against Fox, we now know that hosts like Maria Bartiroma and Lou Dobbs had evidence that Sidney Powell was not a credible source. Now, anybody who's seen Sidney Powell or Rudy Giuliani speak can probably figure that out for themselves, that the, these these two people were not credible. But we know things like Sidney Powell was relying on a woman who was so delusional that she claimed to talk to ghosts and that she, the wind spoke to her and that she had been decapitated and was capable of time travel. And Maria Bartiroma knew that that was Sidney Powell's source, but had her on the air anyway. If if you, Megan, um, knew that I, coming on your show, was relying on someone like that, would you have me on your show? No. That would, I mean, I might because it could be fun to bring that up and see what you squirm. <laughs> but but there's no way you you don't mention it. That's for sure. You you absolutely have to be like, you forwarded me your source and your source is a joke. They call that the wackadoodle email. It was something that uh, Dominion alleges was sent by Sidney Powell herself to Maria Bartiromo um, before she was going on her show. And this is Sidney Powell's source for the thing that got us all spun up over did Dominion have you know, did they hack the election? Did they transfer votes from Trump to Biden? And the author says in this email, quote, who am I and how do I know a lot of this? I've had the strangest dream since I was a little girl that I was intentionally decapitated and yet I live. The wind tells me I'm a ghost, but I don't believe it. It goes on to say that Justice Scalia was purpose- purposely killed at the annual Bohemian Grove camp during a week-long human hunting expedition Um, and that Fox News CEO Roger Ailes, who, by the way, died in 2017, and Rupert Murdoch, this was after that, secretly huddle most days to determine how best to portray Mr. Trump as badly as possible. This person's a loon. It's a loon. Right. And Maria was, she saw that this was Sydney's quote, source before she, quote, platformed Sydney. And you touched on something that's legally relevant here, which is that Maria and Lou Dobbs, knowing this, did not tell their audience that. And that is part of Dominion's case here, is that they had not only possessed this evidence that this woman was a lunatic uh, and she was Sidney Powell's source, but that they hid that from their audience. Another thing that Dominion uh, has claimed, they discovered in the process of of getting all of these tens of thousands of emails and texts uh, from Rupert Murdoch on down, is that Janine Pirro was bragging to her friends that she was feeding Sidney Powell some of these conspiracy theories. And and Jeanine Impero failed to disclose that to her audience. That very well could be something that a jury looks at uh, as, as evidence of defamation. But that's just one other example of why this case is so strong and so extraordinary. I mean, and think about it this way. You, you were listing all the people 
at Fox, uh, from, from the corporate parent Fox Corporation on down to Fox News, who've been deposed in this case and how unusual that is. It's to crazy. Have the chief legal counsel of a company sit for a deposition. I mean, you're the lawyer here, Megan. That is just almost unheard of. And mm -hmm. I don't quite know. It's a mystery and maybe more will come out at trial and, and we'll we'll see that perhaps Fox has a has a stronger case than than we now know. But why the Murdochs wouldn't settle this is a, is beyond me. They've settled far less serious matters for hundreds of millions of dollars. This is a, a major threat to the company, not just financially, but reputationally, because at issue, at its at, at the issue here, at its core, is that Fox lied to its audience and it knew exactly what it was doing in a relentless and reckless pursuit for profit and ratings. I don't know if it's going to be a major threat to the corporation because Fox, I mean, Rupert Murdoch has more money than God and can, he could afford right. 1.6 billion, but he's not going to be forced to pay that. The, the Dominion lawsuit, right. you know, it's not worth 1.6 billion. The company's not worth 1.6 billion. They can potentially get punitive damages, so it could start ramping up. Um, but I just don't think it's going to be that worth that much. So what it tells me, this is my own opinion, that they actually let Rupert sit for a deposition. I mean, Irina Briganti, Suzanne Scott, my God, the fact that they let all these people sit, not to mention their stars, um, tells me they, they they are prepared to try the case. And that means that they're prepared to pay a judgment. And they, mu they must think it's much smaller than $1.6 That's my armchair quarterback. Spring is nearly here. The days are getting longer. The weather's going to get warmer. <laughs> and we know what that means. It's time to get outside and enjoy your backyard or will be soon. What better way to do that than with a Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas? The Michael Phelps Signature Swim Spa helps you create your perfect backyard this season and for many seasons to come. Designed to be used year-round, you can swim, exercise, and relax in the convenience and privacy of your backyard. It's like having your own private oasis at home. Plus, delivery and installation take less than a day once your space is ready. How about that? The water current creates resistance so you can swim in place. You get your exercise right there. And because it's heated, you can choose your perfect water temperature. Enjoy pure relaxation in the massage therapy seats of the swim spa when you're done. You get your exercise and your relaxation all in one. Michael Phelps swim spas are 100% made in the USA by Master Spas, the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. You will love your Michael Phelps swim spa by Master Spas. Go to masterspas.com slash MK for a special offer. Save $1,000 on a Michael Phelps swim spa or $500 on a Master Spas hot tub. Again, go to masterspas.com slash MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.